Well today everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about the studio gear that I can't live without. Let's get into it. So what is going on everybody? Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. My name is Ray. I'm a guitar player here on YouTube and I'm doing this video for two reasons. One, the obvious reason is I just want to talk about some gear and some nerd stuff and just talk about the things that I'm really passionate about and the things that really make my workflow, my job, my career as streamlined as possible, okay? But two, to this day, I'm so thankful and honored that you guys are still interested about like, you know, the things that I use to include studio monitors, DAWs, fake drums, guitar tones, all of the above. So I'm gonna do my very best to kind of compi compile all the things that I really use and that I'm passionate about and, you know, my, my tools, I guess we'll say, and just compile them all in one video. That way you guys can have like a bit of a reference point, I guess, all right? But anyway, enough rambling, enough introduction. Let's start talking about gear, okay? All right, so starting right off, number one is Logic Pro. I've been a Logic user for five and a half years now, I would say. I started out in GarageBand and then quickly realized that GarageBand wasn't enough for me. And I really just wanted to take myself seriously, I guess, or really just be unlimited. And we'll just say it's a better way to describe it. And uh, yeah, man, I've just been using Logic ever since 2017. I have used other DAWs, just like, you know, case by case basis, like Pro Tools and, um, you know, FL Studio, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, man, just Logic's just my DAW. That's what I like to use a lot, okay? Up next is my studio monitors. That is the limited edition. Oh, KRK Rocket 5s. Um, I'm really naive and really green to studio monitors. I wouldn't, I mean, this isn't even a studio, right? But I will say this, ever since I got my KRKs and I really started mixing, mixing in this um, loft and um, really use them to harness, you know, the sound of my mixes, I really think that I have figured out how to make good quality demo mixes. They're not professional sounding, but they're good quality, like rough demo mixes that'll get the job done. Um, you know, for like some some demo songs for like a, um, a guitar demo, an amp demo, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah, I give a lot of credit to my, my studio monitors. Um, yeah, I love them and uh, I see no reason to um, swap them out anytime soon. Up next is my Line 6 Helix. Yes, that is like my, as of, as of late, as of recently, my go-to for not only just dialing in live guitar sounds, but also too, just for fun. Um, I go in and out of phases where like I'll be really into plugins and into amps and now I'm back into modeling and or like, you know, uh, hardware units, multi-purpose effects units, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the Helix, although it's a bit outdated, I'm late to the party. Um, once I figured out snapshots and all that stuff, yeah, man, super rad and super awesome. Um, if I want to, I can use my Line 6 Helix as an interior monitor system as well as send tracks through the Line 6 to front of house. It's really an impressive unit. As of right now, it's everything I could possibly use live minus a power amp. Staying in guitar tone land, we have an oldie but a goodie and that is the STL Tones Tonality Andy James. 100% of the time, I won't even say like 90% of the time, like every time that I just wanna like have a stock guitar sound for um, an original tune specifically, I'll just use Tonality Andy James for the rhythm, the clean, and the lead. Whenever I do my own original songs, you know, my Stay Metal Ray songs, um, I don't mix them. I send them out to Texas, but when I'm, you know, listening back to them and getting the idea and building the song, 99 slash 100% of the time, I'm using Tonality Andy James to monitor myself and get a rough idea of what the song's gonna sound like. Yeah, man, reason why I use it the most is because it doesn't ever crash and it takes up very little CPU space. I could have a ton of Tonality Andy James running simultaneously and uh, yeah, it never, never like gets like those pops and those clicks that you hear a lot with a lot of, you know, CPU processing power, whatever you want to call it. I'm not a tech guy, but yeah, I, I just know that I've had a lot of problems with a lot of amp sims and the more you use, the more likely that your, your computer and or DAW is going to crash. I, knock a wood, have never really had that problem with Tonality Andy James. And it sounds great. All right, the one amp that I own that I personally can't live without is just out of frame and that is my Victory Super Kraken. This is the first amplifier that I personally own that it can do everything that I personally want, okay? Um, has incredible cleans, has a ton of different variety with MIDI and, and programming and all that stuff. I don't even need all that stuff, but last but not least, has an incredible high gain, tight, modern rhythm section and, uh, you know, or rhythm channel, I guess you should say. Um, and that can be attributed, in my opinion, to the focus switch, the focus preamp switch on the Victory Super Kraken. Basically, it's like having a boost and or an overdrive um, built on board. And I love that, man. Um, yeah, so it's just like the only amp, in my opinion, that I can just like plug straight in and it does everything that I personally want just perfectly. Um, yeah, love the Super Kraken, it's great. Up next is this little red fella and that is the Digitech drop pedal. 
Now, that is all over my own original album. That is used all the time when I'm trying to switch back and forth between tunings when I come up with a riff. As of late, I've tried this thing where, you know, like I'll come up with a riff in a certain tuning and then I'll just start manipulating. But for example, if a riff is written in drop C sharp, I'll just start messing with the dial, go down to drop C, drop E, drop A sharp, drop A, etc. I won't go all the way down, you know, to like ignorant territory just yet. But, uh, you know, I do like to mess with the tunings and see, you know, how a certain riff will sound in a different tuning. And a lot of times because of the drop pedal, I've altered an entire song's tuning because I think a specific riff sounds better and I wouldn't be able to do that without having the drop pedal to uh, you know manipulate my own tuning of my guitar. Not to mention endorphins and neck brace were manifested from the Digitech drop pedal. So because of that pedal I came up with my two best songs on my first album. So anyway man yeah I use it all the time and uh, can't live without it. Up next is Superior Drummer 3. I have been a Superior Drummer 3 user exclusively since 2018. I'm not sponsored by Tune Track or anything like that. Um, but yeah, man, I, I've tried to try to get into some other stuff, some other fake drums, um, but I just feel like Superior Drummer 3 is so powerful and so intense and just, just ever expanding and just massive to where like anything else that I personally came across in terms of like a fake drummer, a MIDI drummer, it's like I already have that in Superior Drummer. I've yet to find a product that outdoes Superior Drummer 3 in my opinion. Um, I'm sure there's probably one out there that's just as good as, if not better, but for me, for workflow, for ease of use, for just understanding it, um, understanding the user interface and all that stuff, Superior Drummer 3 does everything I could possibly want, not to mention, sounds great. So, yeah, I've been using that um, exclusively for four and a half years now, almost five years. I was a, um, when I was using GarageBand, I was an Easy Drummer user, and then I, when I switched to Logic Pro, I also switched to Superior Drummer roughly around the same time because, um, yeah, man, it's just, it's so good. Superior Drummer 3 is so good. Um, yeah, can't live without it. All right, now we're gonna end this video with the two guitars that I can't live without. And you might be surprised, especially with this one. This is my custom built Balaguer Toro standard scale, 25 and a half inch scale. And there's a reason why I can't live without this guitar. This is the only fixed bridge super strat that I have that I own that just does like almost everything I wanted to do perfectly. When I say almost, there's one thing about this guitar personally that I'm not a huge fan of, and it's the way that the guitar sounds. And But, but with the exception, the Blackhawk is just a little too trebly for me. Um, I don't know if this guitar naturally has a lot of high end, maybe it's because of a bolt on, you know, one could argue, where does the sound really come from? But I just feel like this guitar has a ton of spank and honestly too much spank, too much um, like high end and, and high mid stuff. Not a lot of low end in this guitar. So I'm thinking about changing out the Blackhawk and maybe putting in something else. I don't know. But regardless, the reason why this guitar is on this list is because almost all of the Drop C Sharp riffs and songs were written and recorded with this guitar on my album. Not to mention, it's splittable. The bridge pickup is splittable. I didn't ask for that. Joe and Balaguer kind of just threw that on there. And at first I was like, oh, that's, that's cool, but you know, I don't really need that. However, I gotta just stop being so narrow-minded and closed-minded because in neck brace especially, I'm using a drop pedal and then I'm using the split coil of the Blackhawk and it gives it that nasty single coil but articulate sound in that song. And the song, or this guitar is also in endorphins. The pickups weren't split there in endorphins but this guitar is also the endorphins guitar. Anyway, man, kind of rambling about my album and this guitar. This guitar is incredibly stable, does everything that I want, super low action. Very, very comfortable, very sentimental because I built this with Balaguer guitars. Um, yeah, all the above, man. Just a, a really solid studio piece of equipment. You know what I mean? This guitar all over my album, stays in tune, yada, yada, yada. X, Y, and Z. I love this thing. But last but not least, yes, the classic Squire Vintage Modified Baritone Jazz Master. Most of you guys probably thought this was going to be on the list, and here it is. Yeah, man. I'm obsessed with baritone guitars, and I've had, what, a dozen baritones on this channel in the last two years, give or take? but nothing has beat my first baritone. This is the first one I ever sought after and, and went out and got myself. And yeah, man, nothing's even been cl honestly close to topping it. There's been a couple that have been, you know, in contention, but every time I plug back into this thing, it just has the sound, it has the clank, it has the jangle, it has the clarity, the gnarliness, all of the above, man. The most unique sounding guitar I own, the most like talked about guitar I own. Everybody asks about this guitar, man. It's just a lot of fun to play. And although it's only a Squire, it's like, it's amazing. It's a Squire, it's so rad, you know what I mean? So anyway, man, 
Um, yeah, this is all over my album. Obviously, it's all over the channel. It's all over everything that I do, man. Yeah, it's just, this is my favorite baritone, I think. This is my favorite baritone, and I think it's going to be um, that way for a while. Uh, yeah, just such a rad guitar, man. All right, everybody, that's gonna do it for this video, man. Those are the pieces of gear I can't live without for my studio. Yo, studio. It's literally just a loft in my house, but, uh, you know, it makes it work for me, man, and those are just the things that I use on a literal daily basis, and, um, you know, not necessarily my favorite things, especially with guitars like the Balaguer Toro. Not my favorite guitar, you know, that, that's okay, but I can't live without that thing because as of right now, it does everything that I want to do perfectly, minus the sound, and you can always adjust the sound. Um, but in terms of playability, I think it's great. This guitar is great. All the stuff I named is great. So anyway, kind of rambling. Let's wrap it up, Ray. That's going to do it for this video. What did you guys think of what I said about all the things that I brought to the table, all the things I brought for show and tell today? Anyway, man, yeah, just thanks for so much for hanging out with me, guys. And I uh, hope this video helped, okay? So everybody, it's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're brand new to my channel and you want to consider subscribing, I'd really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It would uh, make, make me happy and mean the world to me, okay? I'm going to get out of here. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay metal. See you guys next time. Later.